Hello and welcome. So this is the ZL Equalizer by ZL Audio and it's a 16 band dynamic EQ. Now this is free open source software or FOSS as it's known and it's available for Mac, PC and Linux which pretty much covers all of us. Now there is a lot going on on this plugin and I'm not going to cover everything. However, what I will do is I'll cover more than enough to get you up and running with it without too much head scratching. We'll also have a demonstration of the thing in action. And then at the end of the video, we will look at some quirks I discovered that I think are worth knowing. Also, how it can potentially crash your doll and how to avoid it. Okay, lots of stuff to come. Let's get stuck into it. Okay, let's start with the EQ side of things. This is what the plugin looks like when you first open it. Now you can have up to 16 bands. To create a band, quite simply double click. And you now have a band. Now it does pretty much act like a normal digital EQ. You can boost and you can cut, change frequency and alter your bandwidth. Whenever you highlight an EQ band, you also get this uh, little floating window with it which gives you some quick access controls. So from in here, we can bypass this EQ band. We can solo the EQ band, always very useful. We can change our EQ type, low shelf, high shelf, and so forth. And using this X, we can clear the EQ band. Now, when an EQ band is highlighted, you can also control its parameters from this EQ panel down in the bottom left. So let's just go through what we got on here. Again, we've got bypass for the band, solo, menu for your EQ type. Now below this, we've got a slope control. By default, it's on 12 dB per octave. Let's set it to 24 dB. And now as you can see at 24 dB slope, we're starting to get this kind of flat top EQ. Let's put it to 36. Now I find this to be a really useful EQ shape. Generally you would have to open two bell type EQs and try and set them up so that you get something like this. However, it's really nice and handy to be able to do it with just one band. Now below this, we have another menu. Now by default, the plugin is actually in stereo. But with this menu, you also have the choice of just left or right mid or side and this can be set on a per band basis very handy and so the next three controls frequency gain and q they can be adjusted using this outer ring on the control you can double click any of them to reset the default value you can also double click in the middle and type in your own value this thing here, this allows you to switch between bands. And finally, up here, we have an X, which of course, will clear the band. Okay, as far as digital EQs go, no real surprise there. It works exactly as you would expect it to, and ergonomically, it's quite easy to use. So, of course, this is a dynamic EQ. So let's have a look at the dynamics section. If we go back to the EQ panel, you can see this little button here. So when we click this, we activate dynamics for that band, for the band that's highlighted. And so now this is our dynamics panel. Let's go through that. Again, we can bypass the dynamics action. We can solo in on the range of frequencies being affected by the dynamic action. So next up, we have this button here with a big S in it. This now switches our dynamics section to accept an external sidechain. Now bear in mind, this is what we call a global switch. So this external sidechain will affect all dynamic bands that you have going on in the plugin. Okay, we'll switch that off. Next four controls, as you can see, threshold, knee, attack and release. And you can alter these just by left click, hold and drag within these boxes. And you can also double left click to reset them to their default. Okay, let's go up here. So this diamond is basically a range. Let's have some sound. 
so we can pull down for compression of course. We can also turn it up and this is going to give us upwards expansion. Really handy, I like that. This range also limits or extends the amount of compression or expansion going on. Okay, so this thing down here, this shows us the range of frequencies that actually drive the compression or expansion, which are the same as the dynamic EQ band itself. Now, which were the dynamic EQ you would expect? However, you can actually left click hold and drag this to detach it from the band. What this means is we can actually use a different range of frequencies within the signal to set off or, or to drive or compression or expansion. We can also use our mouse wheel, just hover over it to alter the range of frequencies that are going to drive the compression. These can also be controlled in the dynamics panel itself with these two controls here. Whilst this idea isn't actually a new one, it's great to see something like this in a free plugin. Okay, so enough talking, let's hear the thing in action. We're going to be using some drum overheads as you've already heard. So let's play, let's get started. So first of all, we want a high pass filter. I'm going to use my mouse wheel to get a nice resonant bump. And now we're going to try and bring out a little bit more of the kick. It's a bit weak in here. Bypass it. Okay, sounding nice. Now we're going to turn our attention to the area in around 300 to 500 hertz. This is where it gets quite boxy. We're going to do a cut. Now we can get really narrow with this EQ. Sounds good. Bypass. Yep, liking that. Okay, let's go for a high shelf. There's a high shelf. But well, what we're going to do here is, we're going to set our high shelf, if we go over to the bottom left here, we're going to set it just to affect the sides. So this will give us some overall brightness and also give a little bit of a kind of a stereo widening effect as well. Not too much. Sounding good. Okay, let's do one more thing. So the snare is sounding just a little bit dull. So let's try and give it a little bit more crack. Bell EQ somewhere around here should do it. Let's have a listen. Okay, that sounds like the place. What we're going to do is we're going to double left click the gain over here. Reset it. We're now going to make it a dynamic EQ or a dynamic band. We're going to set it to upward expansion. This is sounding great, but now what we're going to do, we're going to take this down here. And we're going to set it so that it's only set off by the snare. Let's actually solo this bit. Now we can hear what's going to be pushing or expansion or driving it. So. Okay, so it's mostly the snare that's going to be driving it. That's making quite a difference. Let's bypass it to hear the difference. Yeah, liking that result. Let's bypass the whole plugin and have a listen to what we got. Yeah, it's a big difference, isn't it? Let's bring it back in again.
making a really big difference. So easy to achieve great results in a very short space of time. I like it. Okay, so what are these quirks that I was talking about at the beginning? Okay, so I'm going to start playback again. And for the first two, we're going to go to this tab at the top, Output. At the very top of this menu, you can see All, and at the moment it's on, and it can be switched off. What this does is it switches off all EQ bands. So in other words, it's a bypass. This is where you bypass the plugin. I have to admit, a little bit unusual to put a bypass in a drop-down menu. Not a big problem really, I mean for the most part I tend to use Reaper's own bypass anyway. So the second quirk that we're going to look at is at the bottom of this menu. Output gain or out gain. This is the master output volume for the whole plugin. So again, just a little bit unusual to have the master output actually hidden behind a drop down menu. But hey, it's not that big a deal really. Okay, let's have a look at one more quirk. I'm going to double left click, create a new EQ band. Now I'm going to make it dynamic by clicking down there, of course. So here's the thing, if I move the EQ band, this range that actually drives the compression expansion doesn't move with it. I expected that it would. It seems to me to be somewhat unusual behavior. Now, the thing here is, it is easily remedied. You just go to here, just left click, this links it back and you can see it immediately jumps back and now it moves with our EQ band. As I say, that's what I would have expected it to do. Again, it's not really that big a deal. Okay, so what of this potential to crash? So whilst I'm not going to literally demonstrate this, I am going to show you how it happens. So let's open up the second one. So now, as you can see, I have two of them open. So here's the thing, if you try to have two ZL EQs in view at the same time and both of them have active bands, this will absolutely crash your DAW. In other words, this has active bands, the one on the left. If I activate a band on the one on the right, Reaper will immediately crash. Now I ran this test numerous times, every single time without fail it actually crashed Reaper. How this will act on your system, I don't really know, but I'm just warning you that this can potentially happen. But to get it in, into perspective, the thing is, this plugin is still under development. Now, the version I've got here is the version 0 0.3.1. So, in other words, it's not even a full number release as yet. And there you have it. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you being here. And, of course, I'll see you next time.